In this video, I'm going to show you how to account for unrealized gains or losses on available for sale debt investments. So available for sale debt investments are marked to market on the balance sheet. So that means they're going to be presented at fair value. So we have to make changes at the end of each period to make sure that they're at fair value. And any unrealized gains or losses are going to go through other comprehensive income. They're not going to go through net income. They're not going to show up in the income statement. No changes, no realized gains or losses are going to hit the income statement unless we were to actually sell the available for sale debt investments. So let me walk you through an example and, and kind of show you how this works. So let's say that we had this Babu's Chocolate Factory. They issued these bonds. Uh, and the bonds, the issue price was $92,221. And so from the investor's point of view, they're going to debit uh, debt investment, and they probably call it debt investment hyphen AFS, available for sale debt investment for $92,221. They're going to credit cash for $92,21. And then I've got a little effective interest table that I put together here. Now, at the end of the, or dur uh, at the, end of the first year, they're going to need to make an adjusting journal entry because they've received interest, right? So the investor has been paid interest by Babu, right? So you're gonna debit cash, you're gonna debit debt investment, you're basically amortizing the discount and so forth. We've, we've talked about those things, so I won't get into all that. We have another video on it. What I wanna introduce here is that what if at the end of year one, the end of year one here, we say that, okay, we look and we see that the fair value, the fair value of the bond is now $95,000. So the fair value of the bond is $95,000. So you might be thinking, why, why would the fair value be different than the carrying value? Because we can see at the end of, at the end of year one, we can see the carrying value of the bond. It's at 93,521. So why would the fair value be different? Well, it could be the case that maybe uh, between, between when we issued the bonds and the end of the first year, maybe interest rates have gone down interest rates have gone down so now our bonds are, are more valuable relative to other other bonds so for whatever reason we look we see the fair value is now ninety five thousand and we see that the carrying value is lower than the fair value right so the fair value the end of year one is greater than the carrying value so we're going to meet we're going to need to make an adjusting journal entry and so it, it seems kind of counterintuitive you would think you would just debit debt investment directly and then just increase the asset account directly and then credit OCI but it doesn't work like that we could create this silly account called fair value adjustment I know it just adds complexity I apologize but fair value adjustment hyphen available for sale securities okay so what we're gonna do we debit this and this is going to be added if we were to think about our balance sheet if we were to look at our balance sheet so let, let me let me say here so here's our balance sheet and then we've got our assets okay so we would see available for sale security okay and we would have it if we just had the carrying value it would be a 95 or 93 5 to 1 but then we're gonna add the fair value adjustment we're gonna add that 1479 okay and if you add them together, the net amount is 95,000, which is the fair value. Okay, so we have marked this to market. That's what we're doing when we're debiting this fair value adjustment account. We are marking this to market. Now, we've got a debit, we need a credit. So what do we credit? We credit unrealized gain, right? And if it had been a loss, you know, obviously we'd be debiting a lot and then we'd be crediting the fair value adjustment. But we have a gain here, so we're gonna credit the unrealized gain but again this is going to OCI other comprehensive income if you don't know what that is I've got another video on other comprehensive income basically other comprehensive income is a, an account that's ultimately gonna get closed out to accumulate other comprehensive income uh, on the balance sheet uh, but basically it increases equity OCI increases equity but it bypasses net income bypasses net income if we had if this was accounted for as a trading investment okay then it would direct it'd be unrealized gain but it would go it'd be dash and I because it would go to net income instead of OCI but this is an available for sales security so it bypasses the income statement okay so equity increases net income is not affected 
Okay, so our, our journal entry balances here. Now, if and when we go and actually sell the available for sale security, then we could recognize a realized gain that would go and affect net income, right? So with available for sale securities, it's not that you will never ever affect net income. It's just that the unrealized gains and losses bypass the income statement, go to this OCI account, but then when you actually sell the available for sale security, then you're gonna have a charge to, to net income, a gain or a loss. And so that's why managers like available for sale securities because you can time uh, when you sell the available for sale security to get a little boost to, to your net income or, or so forth, right? So that's called earnings management. And we'll, we'll talk about that some more in the videos to come.